In springtime, house finches flirt. They pick their mate for the year in late winter and then spend some part of every day for the next few weeks acting like infatuated teenagers. Well, they can't and don't pair off every minute of the day, of course. But if you see two songbirds sitting side by side in the upper branches of a tree, chances are good that it's a pair of house finches. The one sure way for the male to convince a lady that she's the love of his life, for this season anyway, is to feed her. Many male songbirds court females that way. Cardinals, for example. But they're pretty straightforward about it. House finches, on the other hand, make a production of it. Oh, sure, they sometimes get right down to it, but more often, they're coy. When the female wants to be courted, she flutters her wings. It's the same technique fledgling songbirds use to beg adults for food, but when she does it, she's a coquette looking up from under batted eyelashes. The male is just as much into seduction as she is, teasing her as if he's about to feed her over and over again. I don't know about the rest of you ladies, but I would find being pecked at like that truly annoying. But that's because I'm not a female house finch. More times than not, he doesn't feed her anything, but she seems to feel that actual food isn't the point. The pecks are like kisses, and it's the wooing that counts. And anyway, what male house finches are feeding their ladies is regurgitated food. Now, before you get all ew about it, consider that those birds have maybe 50 taste buds to our 9,000. So the females aren't looking for the latest Martha Stewart confection. They just want to know that their man is prepared to help them survive the arduous nesting season. Now the finches may be into the whole seduction scene, but still, they're not overly sentimental. Either one will interrupt the courtship to sharpen a beak. Their beaks have to be filed often so that they will stay sharp, and most songbirds believe in doing it three or four swipes at a time, whenever, and then back to the business at hand. But sexy it ain't. It's like rolling out of your lover's arms to floss your teeth. Even so, the pecking and the regurgitated food and the beak sharpening, all that makes sense to me. But I do wish they'd explain why the male sometimes makes as if to peck his mate when she's looking the other way like a boy who waits until the girl on the couch with him looks away before inching closer. Why be shy? They're already a couple. Oh, yeah, that could happen, but that fellow wasn't making any overtures. For all we know, the female was exasperated with him for sitting around in his undershirt scratching. But I've gotten ahead of myself by starting with the way house finches flirt. Before any of that happens, the male has to attract a lady with his rich raspberry rump and upper parts. On a few males, the coloring is orange or even yellow, but whatever the exact shade, the female considers a fellow with vivid colors a healthy specimen, and thus a good prospect. The house finches are vegetarians. One look at their beak tells you they like seeds, but they also eat berries and even blooms. The male's raspberry comes from the carotenoids in those foods. Yes, the finches eat flowers, like redbud and serviceberry blooms, for the energy in the bud's sugars. The female somehow manages not to turn colorful despite eating the same diet, and a good thing, too because any burst of color might give away her location on the nest. She agrees with the Amish about the wisdom of dressing plain. She's overall the color of used dishwater, complete with grease streaks on her breast. Well, you know, in most of the animal world, it's the male who wears colorful finery. And every manly house finch uses his song to draw the eyes of females to his brilliant plumage.
The song may not ring out like a Carolina Wren's coronet, but it is a Baroque trill worthy of Mozart or Vivaldi. And trust me that no female is interested in a male with a tin ear. It takes a young male thousands of tries to master the species song. Only when he has it down pat will females start giving him sidelong glances. Like other male songbirds in spring, house finch males chase each other and spar, though with one interesting difference. The males of other species are defending a territory close to their nest. But a house finch male sticks close to his mate and chases any males that try to flirt with her. And unlike, say, a couple of robins, their chases will be in the treetops. We call these birds house finches because, like house sparrows, they hang out near houses. You can find them in rural areas, but they're more common at the feeders on your patio. They like man-made structures, little and large. Next time you're out running errands in March or April, keep an ear cocked. You might hear Opus 16 for harpsichord and house finch from one of those swizzle stick sized trees on the Macy's parking lot or outside any office building. But common as house finches are, my grandparents never saw them because this species isn't native to the eastern United States. Before World War II, they were found only in the southwest part of the country and down into Mexico. Then in 1940, a few enterprising pet store owners in New York began selling pairs of captured house finches shipped from California. They marketed them as Hollywood finches. But when the store owners got word that they were about to be busted for selling birds that had been captured illegally, they let the birds go. The finches looked around themselves at the New York countryside and thought, yeah, this'll do. They thrived, spread westward, and met up with their West Coast kin within 50 years. Now, however, they struggle with eye disease that is passed between them at feeders. My husband sterilizes his feeders every week or two, but we still sometimes see house finches suffering from avian conjunctivitis. Ornithologists suspect that coming from such a small gene pool is what makes the eastern members of the species so susceptible to the disease. Its ravages have decreased their numbers by half in the last 10 years. So, for the sake of your local house finches, Keep your feeders sterilized. And one more bit of advice, offer them plenty of fresh water. They drink more than other songbirds do, up to 40% of their body weight a day. Seriously, that'd be about eight gallons for me.